follow me this week as I do a little bit of small scenes landscape photography and I'll talk a little bit about how I think it can improve your creativity when you're out practicing landscape photography as well. So it's really easy when you're practicing landscape photography to get caught up in the big scenes, the grand scenes, whether it be the vistas or like I like to shoot the waterfalls and those things that immediately attract your eye and draw your attention and are sort of the obvious subject of your photo. For example, I like to photograph a lot of waterfalls. You've seen that on my channel. That's, I find them very calming, relaxing, but it can sort of hinder your creativity if you're not very conscious of it is because when you show up at a waterfall, it's like waterfall. There's your subject. That's what you're going to photograph. And all of your thought and thinking goes around how are you going to photograph that waterfall. So your whole mind goes into that and that's what you're thinking about when there could be all sorts of awesome other little things around you. It could be little rivulets of water running through nearby. It could be some of the rock walls. It could be some of the ferns or the moss or some other finer details that you're completely overlooking because you're all caught up in the grand vista, the grand subject. So to me, that creative muscle is something that can be trained, it can be worked on, and something that can be improved. So this morning, I am out here practicing my small scene landscape photography. Came out to a local metro park, and I am going to consciously look for small scenes, deliberate small scenes that I think are pleasing. And while I'm relatively new to that, I realize it's an area of my landscape photography that I need to grow. And so that's why we're going to come out and practice. And I think with time, I can grow that creative muscle so that when I'm at, say, a waterfall or a grand vista, I will also be more aware of some of the smaller details that might make, that might make for some good photos while I'm out there as well. You know, follow me around today while I take a look and try to investigate these small scenes, see what I'll walk away with. Like I said, it is a muscle I'm trying to grow, and not all the photographs from this morning are necessarily going to be great. But I think the effort and the practice of going through those steps and thinking about it and composing it will, in the long term, if I continue to practice, improve those small scenes for me. Okay, so one of the things I'm looking for when I'm looking for like a smaller scene is I'm looking for textures, I'm looking for pops of color, I'm looking for patterns. Those are some of the things I look for. So I was hiking down this trail, looked around, and there's this fallen tree. It looks like it's been here for quite some time. It's pretty rotted, decaying, and it's got some interesting textures in it down along through here. There's another one over this way. So I got the camera out, just sort of played with a little bit. I think maybe there's something interesting here. So I'm gonna sort of hang out here, sort of work the shot underneath the shade of the tree. So I am gonna pop up a tripod. I already sort of handheld and looked around just to see what it looked like through the viewfinder, to just get a feel for it. But I am gonna go ahead and pull the tripod out and we'll set it up. And I'm mainly gonna focus on this little textured ripple right through here. And I've got another one over on this side that I wanna give a try and see how that works. So what I've got, I've got my 24 to 200 on because I wanted a little bit of that zoom factor from the lens to be able to really get in on the texture I want. I started with a 2470, but I couldn't quite get in. I like this working position a little better. I did put a polarizer on just because the wood is damp and I'm trying to cut through a little bit of the glare. It's not tremendous because I am under pretty heavy shade of the trees. But I did put a polarizing filter on just to make sure I get that texture to pull through what I'm looking through. And I'm just going to play with changing my composition here. Probably try a little bit of angle over here, a little bit over this way. Then I'll pop over to this side and give that a whirl too and see what I get. Now I did some of this when we were in West Virginia a couple weeks ago. Um, we were at one of the spots where the light wasn't the greatest, especially when the fog started to pass. So I did start to play with some abstracts, which I'll probably put in this video here. But one of the things I noticed in what I wasn't paying super close attention to was my crispness of the whole image. I had a lot of blurry pieces because my depth of field was shallow and I wasn't super happy with that. Still interesting images, but not as sharp as I think they should have been. So for here, just because I'm in a similar situation where I'm really zoomed in, my depth of field is shrinking, is I am doing a quick focus stacked image of this just so I can see how I get everything in focus around that. Okay, so now I've moved over to the other side of the, the log. There's a little bit of texture here. We're gonna see what we can make happen. Let me get you a little more straight on. So I'm just trying to find composition that works. 
visually when I was walking by, it was actually what caught my attention. But lining up in camera, I'm not 100% sure I'd like what I'm getting from it. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, we're going to focus stack this image just because there's a, it's a relatively deep scene. I'm a bit on the lazy side. I'm actually trying to capture these more flat on, but this one is, because it's a deeper scene, I'm just going to have to focus stack. There's just no way I'm going to get it because I'm zoomed in enough that I think that's going to be problematic. So we're going to focus in on something close to me. We will kick off the focus stack. Using the focus shift shooting on the Nikon. I've done videos on how to use that. It's great for situations like these where I just sort of want the camera to manage it. A little concerned if it's going to catch exactly what I want. So yeah, so I may do one manual focus stack just to be sure I get it. Uh, the way I want, and we'll see what happens. So from here, once we finish up these shots, I think that'll be enough playing around at this little spot. I'm going to go back down to the creek where it was running through some of the rocks, and assuming the sun isn't in too poor of a position, there's a couple little spots I want to play with there, both rocks and the water, and I think a little bit where the water flows through a series of rocks, which I can think if, if we do a small scene on it, it could be pretty cool. It's one of those where if you have a grand vista, not sure it'd work out because it's not that spectacular on a grand scene of things. When we zoom in, Focus on what we really want. I'm hoping we get some cool moving water over rocks thing. Okay, when I came through here a little bit earlier, I saw this little ripple over here that I thought would be pretty cool. This is a reasonable little creek bed. A lot of clutter. Leaves aren't changing yet, so, you know, I'm not sure it makes a grand photo, but this is where the small scenes photography comes in. So I'm going to go out here with the 24200, a little bit of glare. So I'm taking an ND filter and my polarizer just to see what I need to work with while I'm out there. The light sun is coming up, so I'm going to start to lose my light, get even more glare. So I'm going to move sort of quickly. So I'm going to set you up here and sort of look out over that way. And I'm going to go try to find my shot. It'll be the 24 to 200, some combination of polarizer and ND filter. And I'm going to try to just get where this water runs over those rocks. A very small, intimate scene. I'm going to see if I can make it work out. Okay, so I'm just playing with my composition here to see what I can come up with. The water's coming through here. I think I want more of these rocks in the frame, so I'm gonna move over this way a little bit. And I am probably gonna to have to put the ND filter on to really, there we go, those rocks are a little better. There, so what I've got now is I've got some rocks in the scene, give it some interest. So when I was over here, I didn't have enough of the rocks, so when I blur out the water and things like that, I still needed some subject of interest in there other than just blurred water and because what i'm trying to paint here is this is a rocky creek bed with water flowing across so if i don't have those rocks in there good enough then i start to lose some of the the story of the image so even though they're small scenes you still really have to think about the composition in fact i think composition becomes even more important and i think that's where it really helps build your creativity okay i'm gonna do one more quick test shot only the circuit polarizer let's make sure i've got it adjusted the way i want do Take this shot, it's only about a half second, which is why I think I'm gonna to need to put the ND filter on. Yeah, I want this water to be even more smooth. So we're gonna put my ND filter on as well. Make sure it's not too dirty. So we're gonna pop the circular polarizer off and hope I don't drop it in the water. We're gonna put, this is a six stop ND filter. So that's gonna cut even more light, letting me get a longer shutter speed. And like I said, for the look I'm going for is nice crisp rocks and smooth water all around it. So that's the look we're going for. Put the ND filter on. Now I'm going to put my polarizer on because I do want to cut that glare down. I'm on a step up ring, so I shouldn't really have to worry about vignetting or anything like that through here. So now I have to slow the shutter speed way down. Just that polarizer to cut the glare. Definitely a lot of glare. Definitely need the polarizer in this shot. Slow down a little more. And I got the sun popping through to my right, like right here. So that's really adding to the glare. I should have shot this a little earlier this morning as opposed to waiting till now. Okay, take a quick test shot. Okay, I'm definitely getting in the ballpark here of what I want. So what I've got is I've got a F9 aperture, ISO 64, which lets me get a 25 second exposure. And I've got the rocks up there, give me my texture. And I really smooth out the water to sort of get what I was looking for. So. And I've got this one little leaf that's caught on a rock that sort of bugs me just a little bit. So, we can change the composition just a touch, see if I can find something cool. Okay, 
So I've moved over to the right just a little bit. What that did is I had a striking green leaf. I could have photoshopped it out, but always, you know, pay attention to that while you're out in the field. It may save you some work. Maybe I'll photoshop that out in the image I use, but always go for the image that's going to be closest to correct out of camera uh, before you start editing if you can. So I've shifted this way. I like the composition. So what I've got is I've got the rocks sort of coming in a diagonal across the frame a little bit. I'll still get that nice slowed blur of the water and it should be hopefully a pretty interesting shot. Might like it a little better. I am going to hop on that though because that sun is still moving like right here. I'm just going to keep getting more and more glare. I'm focusing in on one of the rocks for my focus point. I'm still at ISO 64, F9, 25 second exposure. Nice. I like the effect. There's an interesting deadfall down here that still has some of its dead leaves against this really stark, bright, white fallen tree. I think I'll go play with that, try to get one more image out of here this morning before we head home and uh we'll see what that gets so yeah okay so what we've got here is this is this fallen tree that comes down across here what attracted me to it was bright white limbs against its dead leaves so getting that pop of color that contrast that's what i that's what i see now whether i can make a workable shot out of it that's that's the question you got to work the shot a little bit to see but that's what attracted my attention to it that sharp contrast can i get something cool out of it so we're going to just take a few minutes here try to work the shot a little bit see what i can get Still the 24-200 just to give me that great focal length latitude and I do have my polarizer on there. Okay, so what I've done now is I've moved a little closer to the tree and I'm trying to get really close into one of the limbs. There's this limb that comes in, big one comes off, a little upspurt this way, backed against those, those trees. So I'm zoomed in all the way to 200 to get that shot. Slow my shutter down a little bit to get those shadows to come out, hit my focus. So what I've got is I've got the tree sort of cutting diagonally across and I've got the little fork in the tree and we'll see how that does. Again, just trying to get some compositions to play with. I don't do a ton of small scenes and that's what I'm out here practicing is trying to train my eye to see these things and to figure out what is going to present itself well in the final image. So yeah, we're going to see how that works out. So right now I'm just sort of moving through the tree, changing camera angle and playing with different scenes. In this case, I'd rather get home with several images to review and really think about what worked and what didn't. So that a few trips out, I, I can again train that mind to see these small scenes and figure out more quickly what works and what doesn't. Like I said, I think we mentioned it earlier, but being able to have plenty of time out to work these scenes is important. Uh, luckily this is off in the shade, so unlike the water where I was getting the glare, it's a little easier to work with. But uh, but yeah, uh, get another shot here, and then we'll head back to the camera bag, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So that wraps us up for this morning. Hopefully it was useful following me around as I worked on these small scenes myself. It's an area of my practice. I hope to improve this skill. But if you did find this video useful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.